guys welcome to my channel and topic is geolite process this is the one of the softening method to convert hard water to soft water so you can watch all previous six videos in my channel the corresponding link was provided in the description along that you can also watch uh, topics in electrochemistry and corrosion and basic chemistry in my channel so what is softening of water the process of removing or reducing hardness causing salts present in the water is called softening water so irrespective of it is temporary or permanent so removing of total hardness from the water is called softening method so that mean in simple word removing of hardness mean so whose are whose are cause for the hardness so calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2 if you can remove the calcium and magnesium salts from the water that is equal to softening of water so why it is difficult to remove calcium and magnesium salts these are completely in completely soluble in water that's why we cannot remove these salts by easiest ways like filtration so the basic principle in the softening of water is if you convert soluble salts into insoluble salts or precipitates you can easily remove these all hardness causing salts so you can see here converting of hard water into soft water is called softening method that's very simple one of the softening technique of hard water is geolite process geolite has highly ordered porous structure material which having the sodium aluminato silicates generally it is called hydrated sodium alumino silicates and you have a micro porous texture so uh, these can be the name can be varied by the number of sio2 molecules and number of water molecules present in the geolite so generally it is called hydrated al sodium alumino silicate na2o al2o3 sio2 and h2o but uh, the name of geolite can vary by the number of x a number of SiO2 molecule and number of water molecule generally X value vary from 2 to 10 and Y value vary from 2 to 6 depending on this number different geolites having different naming okay so these geolites are naturally occurring some of the geolites are naturally occur for example clay so clay is the example for the geolite it is called natrolite so naturally available all geolites is called natrolites and these zeolites also can be prepared in the laboratory so those are called permutate that's why this process is also called permutated process so sometimes this process is also called permutated process what is the necessity to produce the synthetic zeolites so naturally available zeolites are limiting their application because of uh, less pore structure in order pore structure to generate the a perfect force structure we need to prepare the geolites in laboratory those are called permitted and finally whatever the geolite it is naturalite or permitted it can be represented as na2jd that means the total this this uh, remaining part is considered jd and na2jd it is represented as na2jd that means thus na2jd when it is decomposed state it produces the two na plus ions and jd minus two ions that means it easily one thing we can observe here sodium geolite can easily remove two na, NA plus ions okay so what is the basic principle involved in the geolite process so geolite having a porous structure and also it has loosely bounded two na plus ions on its surface that's why we are mentioned we are represented the sodium geolites as na2jd na2jd means it has loosely bounded na plus ions on its surface this loosely when the hardness causing salts that mean calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2 when these salts are approaching to the geolite geolite having two na plus ions these na plus ion mutually exchanged by the hardness causing salts you can see here figure so this is the geolite bed so sodium geolite it having the number of sodium molecules sodium ions on its surface these sodium ions are replaced by the calcium or magnesium here only calcium is showing if water having magnesium plus 2 that magnesium plus 2 ions also replaced by the 
sodium plus ions that mean the water hard water having calcium plus two ions are replaced by the sodium plus ions the when water is passed over the jewelite bed so water having calcium plus two magnesium plus two are filtered and sodium plus ions are generated in the water like that we can remove all calcium plus two and magnesium plus two ions by replacing with the sodium plus ions this is the basic principle in the georide process you can see here the process so this is the a uh, one tank in between the tank middle of the tank georide bed is um, uh, arranged here so this georide bed having so many na plus ions on its surface so here so many na plus ions on its surface and they are loosely bonded and they are readily ready to exchange with the another positive ions another cations so when hard water is passed over the geolite bed hard water means it having calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2 simply i can show with m plus 2 m plus 2 ions having hard water when is when this passed through the geolite bed this m plus 2 ions are captured by the geolite pores instead of m plus 2 ions sodium ions are released to the water so like that we can uh, remove the calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2 ions present in the water instead of calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2 we are generating sodium plus ions into the water remember one thing so only calcium and magnesium salts only generate the hardness to the water not sodium plus ions of course sodium plus ions generate the salty taste or different other problems but na plus ions having water is not called as a hard water so this is the process you can represent in the chemical equation this is the ge sodium geolite we have a sodium geolite on that we are passing calcium chloride so calcium chloride is hardness causing salts when you pass the calcium chloride over the geolite bed the sodium plus ions are replaced by the calcium ions that's why it producing calcium geolite so and two na plus ions and two cl minus ion interact each other and forms a two nacl so uh, if you pass the MgCl2, that means Mg plus 2 ions are when the passed through the geolite bed, they are producing magnesium geolite and 2 NaCl. You have to note one point here, when the water continuously passing over the geolite bed, our sodium geolite is slowly converting into calcium or magnesium geolite. Calcium or magnesium geolite. So like that if you continuously carrying the process number of sodium plus ions present in the geolite will be exhausted this is totally totally exchanged by the calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2 at one point there is no available na plus ions present in the geolite surface that situation is called exhaustion of the geolite bed now if you pass the hard water this exhausted bed is unable to purify or unable to softening the hard water so now we need to regenerate the geolite bed so you can see the diagram here is a zip form so when you pass calcium and magnesium plus ions so from the outside here so all na plus ions are replaced by the calcium and magnesium plus two ions so again so this Na plus ion and magnesium ions are coming into the outside uh, outcome water when you pass so now it is unfit for the to generate the soft water now you have to pass sodium plus ions the sodium plus ions again replace the Mg plus 2 or calcium plus 2 ions again our geolite sodium geolite bed is regenerated so like that we can regenerate the sodium geolite bed by passing NaCl or Na plus ions so that is the process is called regeneration regeneration of the sodium geolite bed so when you continuously passing hard water our sodium geolite slowly converting into calcium or magnesium geolite so that is called exhaustion when you are passing brain solution that means nacl solution nacl solution having na plus ions now this na plus ions are replaces the calcium plus 2 and a magnesium plus 2 present in the geolite bed it can be represented as like this so our geolite bed is now calcium geolite okay so you are passing sodium ions this sodium ions replace the calcium ions and forms the 
sodium zeolite instead of that one calcium chloride is come into the outside water this water should be drained outside okay so like that magnesium zeolite also regenerated by using sodium chloride it produces the sodium zeolite. so again sodium zeolite is ready to softening water again we can regenerate you can you softening the water for the next stage again it will be exhausted like that so many times we can recycle or regenerate our sodium zeolite bed so this is the process in the zeolite process so what are the advantages and disadvantages of the zeolite process so from this process you can obtain up to 10 ppm hard water so this is the this water can be used in some of the industries okay so drinking water may have 100 to 300 ppm hardness so no need zeolite process is no required not required for the drinking purpose but industries are more specific they don't require any hardness so it produces the up to 10 ppm hardness that hardness uh, less hardness water can be used in the different applications of the industries and the operation cost is very less of the zeolite process the equipment also very compact unit you can it occupy very less space so you can easily use this one and required no skill to maintain and operate the um, zeolite process so and no sludge also formed but only one thing is here instead of hardness causing salts we are producing NaCl or NaSO4 into the water that means the limitation of process is here we are only replacing the cations present in the water with Na plus ions. What about anions? Calcium chloride. What is the hardness causing salt? Calcium chloride, calcium sulfide, calcium bicarbonate, magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfide, magnesium bicarbonate. But we are only replacing with all cations, calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2. Then what about the anions? So still anions present in the water and another thing is when you are replacing calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2 you are releasing Na plus ions into water these Na plus ions and that unreacted cations sorry anions combine each other and form sodium salts so final output output water having more percentage of sodium salts okay so again the highly acidic water is not suitable because it affects the sodium zeolite bed okay and if water contained iron or iron or uh, aluminium type salts these aluminium or iron salts are also replaced by the sodium ions but these cannot be regenerated by passing sodium ions so see here calcium plus 2 and magnesium plus 2 are captured by the zeolite bed but when it is when you are passing sodium ions these are again replaced by the sodium ions so we can regenerate the calcium and magnesium ions by sodium ions but if the water contains iron and manganese iron and manganese these are they form a strong uh, interaction with the zeolite bed so you cannot regenerate the bed that means for one time use only you can use that's why you are passing water through the zeolite bed you should not, that should not contain any iron and magnesium ions this is the one of the limited and another thing is uh, the raw water should not contain the suspended impurity suspended impurity means silica like the dust particle if you pass like this water that suspended particle captured in the captured into the pore structure of the zeolite it will it efficiency of the zeolite weight will be decreases so these are the limitations and applications of the zeolite process so in next class we will discuss about the ion exchange process so zeolite pro in zeolite process we only exchange the cations only in ion exchange process this is also a ion exchange process but it's not a complete ion exchange process in next class we will deal with deals with the complete ion exchange process that is called ion exchange process or demineralization process thank you for with me thank you very much